sharpen the axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berezetsky. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sharpen the Axe on Entertalk Radio, powered by Pitbull Audio. I'm Eric Lucero. And I'm Paul Berezetsky. And we have with us today, Kevin Proctor of Iconic Guitars. Welcome back, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for uh, you guys being here. I know Good we had a little, little struggle getting going, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, we are, we're on air. We're, uh, hopefully this is actually going out and we're not just tricking ourselves right now. <laughs> uh, but there's, uh, you got, you've had some pretty awesome news and some pretty... Uh, a great gain since we last saw you. So uh, why don't we start with a little update about what's been happening? Right on. Yeah, we've got uh, some pretty cool things going on, man. It's, it's uh, I'm excited. Uh, we have expanded the model line pretty significantly. We started off uh, doing the vintage inspired pieces that I brought uh, last time I was here. Uh, you know, kind of uh, some uh, famous artist inspired stuff, uh, kind of period inspired, and then we've uh, for Nam uh, of past. We introduced the Evolution line, um, which I'm holding, mm -hmm. and um, within that, we wanted to kind of take that uh, those standard shapes, if you will, and, and kind of move them uh, more into a modern era guitar uh, with some, you know, more modern switching, modern voice pickups, uh, have some uh, more, I guess, uh, bigger frets, you know, all the all the things that yeah. are kind of becoming popular on, on guitars of today. So. We brought a handful of those, and then uh, as far as um, what Paul's got, he's got uh, something we've been working on with a with a really good friend of mine, uh, Till Paris, for gosh, probably about a year. Uh, we have been hammering this guitar out, and this is kind of the um, the brainchild of, of his. But and then we were able to put it together for him. Uh, so it's uh, we're calling this right now. It's it's kind of going for the neoclassic. Uh, title. It's it's kind of what we've we've been going under the moniker of, and in this one we're running a a five a um, bird's eye board, three a neck with a, a five a bird's eye roasted neck, um, just oil finished on that, and then uh, with the body we've kind of gone uh, you know kind of the opposite where the you know, the roasted is kind of all the the rage right now, and <laughs> yeah. um, you know and this piece is just I mean you catch the light and it's it's just fantastic. Uh, you know, with a 10 to 14 compound radius, 57 nice. by 110, uh, stainless steel Jeskar frets. Uh, then on the body, we went kind of old school. You know, we went with a with a nice lacquer finish, and you know, there's always that kind of um, never-ending debate about whether poly finishes really impact <laughs> tone. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that old debate. And and I know we don't have time to get into it yeah. here, but uh, I mean, we're sure that we could put a couple of shows together on that. But so with that, we kind of wanted to um, to maybe lean uh, toward the side of okay, yeah, let's go with the old you know nitro finish. So we did a nice uh, you know really really light relic on this. Uh, you know, got it to to check up and you know kind of you can see the Olympic white looks like it's been around for a little bit. But then we went with the you know a modern two point uh, Goto five ten with a big steel block. Um, and then the pickups, we ran uh, some David Allen P51s with nice. true 62s in the neck, uh, Emerson Potts, uh, CRL five-way switch, uh, and we do this one where down uh, in the one position is you know full humbucker, split humbucker, then uh, combo uh, straight up you know kind of standard strat wiring throughout. Nice. <clears throat> uh, then in all of our evolution models, one of the things uh, that from a vintage style guitar uh, is is kind of difficult is is the heel adjust mm -hmm. like on a Strat or Tele yeah, or whatever yeah. you know so uh, for touring musicians whatever you know we we kind of have some tricks that we're able to do it but still it's it's a little more difficult to get into you know the the um, neck pocket uh, so you know one of the things that forever has been available is you know uh, a, you know an access up at the at the top of the neck and. I don't really like the way that looks. So we went with uh, all the evolution models. We went with the wheel heel adjust. Nice. Uh, here again, not you know recreating the wheel, but you know wanted to, <laughs> wanted to have something that you know you could just about annoy uh, annoy uh, adjust anywhere um, on the fly. And so we've incorporated that into the neo classic as well. So we've got you know this kind of the super killer modern neck uh, mixed with a little bit of the you know the old school uh, nitro finish, which gives it that you know. It's a really, really pretty singing guitar. And just to clarify, this is separate from the uh, the vintage series and the evolutions. It, the neoclassical yeah. will be its own series. It kind of fits right in the middle, and um, you know, it's, it's certainly something we can expand on. Uh, and like I said, you know, having 
having worked so diligently with, with uh, Till on this, uh, it really became apparent as I started to talking to other people mm -hmm. uh, that we got something here. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There's something that people really dig about it. And like I've shown this picture around before we, and I actually just fully got finished tonight or um, this morning. Um, but there's just a lot to like about this. And, and for whatever reason, uh, it, it's generated a lot of interest in a little bit of social media posts that we've put up. I didn't want to kind of ruin it, you know, and have yeah. it all out there before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've had, I've had some, some good inquiries in it. So, you know, that kind of slots itself right in the middle of the vintage series and the, and the evolution series. Because on the, on the Evos, we're, you know, using, you know, uh, I guess what you would also call the modern poly style finishes. And um, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't, you know, hear the difference, but I'm, I'm playing that guitar or, or a vintage series in, in a different style or a different uh, environment. Uh, you know, in the Evos, we're using more aggressive pickups. You know, yeah. so there's a modern lot of, voicing. Yeah, you know, maybe something that, <clears throat> you know, if I were to dress one out in, uh, you know, some some '50s voice pickups or something like that, maybe I would. But um, for the most part, I think, um, you know, the, the way that we're doing the evolutions, a little, you know, the poly gives itself a, it, it's got its own thing, right? Right. So, and as as you are a custom company, I mean, what options are available for the for the neoclassical? Is it just a double cutaway style? Is there a T style available or? You know, I, you know, to be honest with you, having just finished this, uh, you know, kind of production prototype up, we certainly do this same exact uh, style in um, in the T style, uh, you know, giving you the, the Telecaster shape. And with this, the neck uh, is available in, in all of our shapes. So we've got the all thin right. C, nice. you know, the medium C, uh, and we've also got, you know, the kind of what I call a slim. And it's it's the super shredder 750 800 real thin yeah fast um, yeah so I, I've got uh, actually I've got some of those coming right behind this one uh, yeah, with Floyd's and stuff like that so it should be pretty killer nice. you know same kind of thing with you know Floyd Rose kind of you know so it'd be, it should be pretty cool how about we get a little taste of what that sounds like uh, Paul sure I'll need a you're gonna need oh these, yeah yeah you? <laughs> you need to plug them in yeah <laughs> there you are sir. And it's it's very articulate. It's it's I mean that roasted maple neck and the the uh, the David Allen's in there, correct? So uh, yeah, yeah, this, David. This is the full humbucker, and this is split or vice versa? Yeah. Uh, so the one the one position full humbucker, and then that split with the so that would be your your standard like two position. Okay. In, in a strat, so it pretty much splits the bucker, and then you're in the two position. You're uh, half of the. Oh, half but of the it, it doesn't split it by by no. itself into just no. a single core. Okay, so you don't sure. you don't get the position of it and, and certainly we can wire it this way but this is a, a standard configuration um in this particular configuration i'm more likely to use these you know the the normal strat mm -hmm. position there where i'm getting the middle mixed with the single coil of the humbucker um you know but certainly we could figure we could, if, if you just want you know raunchy rock and roll then you just yeah the, yeah the, yeah then you get just going balls out yeah let's yeah. let's just do it And a quick note for our uh, for our gain, we are uh, using a Fuzz Rocious uh, Rack King. Uh, now, what is this, the? Do you have a starting price point for for uh, where the builds start for the neoclassicals? You know, with the with the roasted maple, uh, to be honest with you, I, I needed to get it together. Um, I'll probably have some stuff up on the site. Uh, what are we Thursday today? Yes. Yeah, hopefully I can get to uh, get that information together. Um, it will probably come in. You know, the, uh, the roasted maple is a little bit more, um, you know, and then we talked a little bit about some options. Uh, yes. You know, we, we do the fret options, and it's, like I said, this is the jumbo stainless. It'll probably be what we end up doing it with stock. Right on. Um, you know, but if, and some, you know, it's not for some people's bag. You know, they don't like that. So we can certainly, um, you know, do something else there. Uh, but like I say, the Godot bridge, you get the hip shot, um, open back locking tuners. Kind of staggered, you know, so no no need for a, um, a string tree there. But yeah, just uh, I want to say off the top of my head, it's probably going to be 
probably in that 27, 29 range. Not bad, man. Not right bad. That's I, I had, like I said, I, I don't want to commit to it, but you know, sub 3,000, I'd like to keep it. Right on. And uh, we have plenty of other great guitars around us. And uh, in my hands here, I have uh, one of the Telecaster builds, which I, you didn't bring last time, I don't believe. No, I didn't, yeah. uh, I didn't have any of those available with, and, uh, on the last show. And this is the 67T. I know it's got Lawlers in it. Uh, it. I've been enjoying picking this up and playing it as we got prepped for show. Now, uh, what else can you tell us about this one right here? Uh, this is, again, there's a nitro finish on this one. We got the, the uh, light relic on it. Um, it's a J Street and uh, the bridge. And, and I like that pickup a lot in the bridge. Um, it, it, it's voiced really well. It, 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 it sings, especially in, in a band style mix. It just, it, it really, it, it, it's not like so out in front, mm -hmm. um, but, but you know, it, it's also um, pronounced. Um, Rosewood neck, uh, quarter sawn, all of our uh, maple necks, uh, you know, we were doing some flat sawn pieces a while back and, and I've just moved to every piece of maple that we use as quarter sawn. Um, it has proven time and time again to aid in uh, stability uh, throughout, you know, humidity cycles, uh, you know, touring musicians taking them from you know, East Coast to West Coast and, you know, just subjecting them to all kinds of, you know, different environments. They just seem to hold better and techs love them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It must be much um, better for maintenance on the road. Yeah. And uh, we got, we got Goto's up here? Uh, no, those are the Clusen, um, you know, vintage. I, th I think those are one lines on there. Um, Looks to be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Those are, those are the, you know, they're, they're Clusen single line uh, vintage style tuners. And actually, on that we've we've they've got those um, where they do a, a vintage locking, where they actually lock from the top, so you can kind of get, oh, really? get the advantage of that as well. I, I like those on a trem guitar, on a you know on a um, you know solid bridge like that. I I think it's I think it's just fine. I don't know. It's It still has that telly sort of twang and spank to it, but it's got a little bit more throatiness. Yeah, I had to, I I like had to cheat and check out. I, I forgot what was in the neck of that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you it's, know, we, we've, yeah, we've, we've, um, yeah, we've been using a lot of, um, of Lawler's pickups, and, I, and I've just been blown away. I mean, we've uh, you know, committed to using them in, in quite a few models. Um, I think, yeah, every, oh, except for the DMGs the over there. But I just did a, a, a big run of Evos, and we put Lawlers in all of them. And I have to tell you, we used, um, I didn't use any low wines of the humbuckers, but I used the regular Imperial and the Imperial high wind, and then I did those in combination with, with dual humbuckers like the one I have here, and then uh, some HSS guitars and some HSHs. And just bar none, fantastic sounding across the board. Sure. Um, and and very very splittable. I was just talking with uh, with a good friend of mine who has uh, one of our um, Evo T's and it's got a, a dual humbucker set up in it. And we're running Imperial High Wines in it. And he goes, I'm I'm amazed at how well these split. It's not like I'm playing. It doesn't sound like I'm playing a half a pickup. Yeah. And um, that that's a really important thing, especially in the way that we wire the 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 T's and and you kind of get uh, a good. Um, you know, kind of telly sound, but you also get the benefit of having two humbuckers. Yeah. You know, so you get, you get the fullness of both. So uh, that, that was pretty cool. And I literally was just talking to him in the car before we came up to the studio. And it's uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the artists that you, you've been uh, expanding your artist roster, haven't you? Yeah, we've actually um, been doing pretty well with that. Um, you know, we don't have a, uh, you know, what I would call the, you know, a-list, you know, Steve Vai type guy, yet, yeah. But you, hey, you, you know, got a, you got a drill a handle in here, uh, right? Yeah, I got yeah, yeah, some, yeah. to get something yeah. to carry the guitar by first. But uh, <laughs> he's really lazy. But you he know what? We, use cases. We, we have some some really accomplished guys, and we've you know been uh, pretty diligent about putting those guys up on our on our site. And uh, you know, it means a lot to me, and, and I'm incredibly humbled when guys that make their living playing music, 
you know, will take the time to either send me a text or, or shoot me a call and say, hey man, this guitar is just performing flawlessly. It's doing everything I wanted to do. I can't thank you enough. It's, it's a really, really humbling experience. And, and for, for me and, and, and the guys that, that help out behind the scenes, uh, you know, Mike Boone and um, you know, my friend Paul who helps us with a lot of the finishes and stuff, um, it's really, uh, it's a cool feeling, man. It really is. I bet, absolutely. And, uh, and we have some of the uh, Evos right around, or any of those artists. Well, you said uh, one of them was playing an Evo T. Yep, yeah, we, so we've got uh, a, a couple of country bands um, that, are, that are playing uh, some Evolution stuff. Uh, on the road with, uh, with Colt Ford and um, a few other guys that uh, we're not quite ready to mention yet. But, ah, right you know, on. Kind of in the early stages of, uh, of our agreements, if you will. Right on. And uh, well, well, since we mentioned it, uh, tell us about the Evo series. And, and there's two, uh, two kind of sublines, the Evo and the Evo Limited, correct? Right. So the, uh, what you have over there um, to your right, yeah. So this is, this is an evolution. We loaded this one up with the uh, uh, EMG HSS pickguard. And um, for this way, you know, they're, they're essentially the same guitar, outfitted the same, same tuners. Uh, neck options and what have you, uh, but obviously you can see this one is uh, you know just straight. Uh, I'll go that for you. Not I got one down oh, here. Oh yeah, right. I'm going. I'm going in. Um, you know that there uh, is um, you know just a straight finish, straight pickguard, um, top routed guitar. Uh, and then for the uh, Evolution Limited, we're doing 5A either uh, quilted or flame maple, and I've got a bunch of uh, you know like uh, clear old walnut and. Um, burls and stuff like that going as well that hopefully we'll have those out in another four or five weeks. Which is good to know because players like me, I like a good figured top and if you want uh, a, a nice, really custom looking build, uh, uh, Kevin can absolutely provide that for you. Yeah, we, uh, we have a, a, here's the way that I look at it. So we have um, put enough options out there to where you can spec out a guitar pretty much just the way you want it. Yeah. And, you know, I've had this um, where we've done, you know, custom builds, you know, it's where we've kind of uh, uh, moved away from the custom guitars, if you will. You know, we, we've, we've changed the web name not that long ago. It, it took a little while to acquire, but, you know, we've just gone to iconic guitars and, and we've tried to take the things that, that folks like the most, that they, that they buy the most, that they're utilizing the most playing and, and make those options available so that, you know, it's a fairly repeatable piece. And with the Evo line, <clears throat> We wanted to be able to provide, you know, um, the uh, ability to have, a, a, you know, somewhat of a price point guitar, um, you know, crafted in the United States. And here you're going to get, you know, real beautiful pearl. And this one's kind of unique. I'll tell you a little bit about this one. So I had been um, doing a lot of research on waterborne stuff and living in the state of California and uh, using solvent base and lacquer and stuff like that is very challenging. Um, so we wanted to be able to, you know, try something else. Yeah. So I had talked to some buddies of mine doing some finishes. Yeah, you know, the waterborne stuff's coming along. So this is the very first guitar, oh, wow. uh, save for the tongue oiled neck, um, you know, which is essentially just an oil finish. Um, but from all the paint on this, all the sealer, uh, everything on this, uh, all the way to the clear is all waterborne. And uh, it's super ultra low VOC. It's, it's almost to the point where you can drink it other than, you know, the, obviously the pigment and, uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. I don't want to do it. I mean, I'm sure somebody would. But, uh, this is so, the only safely edible guitar. Right, yeah. yeah. So right. If, you're, if you're ever trapped somewhere and you're really hungry, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I can start taking it. No, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm, I'm, it's obviously a blue guitar, so I don't want to call it a green guitar. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it's very, um, you know, the, uh, the hazardous fumes that are emitted during the, the finishing process are significantly reduced in that. So way. you haven't killed as many brain cells in the finishing <laughs> right. department. Right. Well, then what the heck fun was it, you know? True. But so, no, you know, like here, uh, we do this, you know, in any pretty much uh, configuration here as far as pickups, the HSS, HSH, HH uh, configuration. We can certainly do those with the EMGs. I kind of wanted to do one with that just to kind of show some versatility there. And then in the uh, limited line, you can see we, you know, we do the, sorry about that, Paul. Um, we do the fancy tops and then, um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of folks, you know, and we can certainly do them too, but I wanted to do something that kind of differentiated our, our, uh, limited line mm -hmm. from maybe some of the other guitars that are available out there. Mm -hmm. So rather than having, you know, maybe a, a bound, which we do do on some, uh, did I say do do? 
Can you say that on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, you can in here. Right? So uh, we wanted to, you know, kind of take that, you know, that beautiful top wood and rather than just making it look like grandma's coffee table on the back with it with a you know with a stain and, and a clear on it we wanted to have you know some really super killer pearl you know so this is copperhead you know this is this is beautiful i mean this if this guitar were fully painted in in the pearl it would be you know just a killer color and then you know we carry that through up into the headstock on uh all the limited models as well and then uh you know, running hip shot hardware on, uh, you know, save for, you know, Floyd equipped guitars, but uh, on the two points, we're running the hip shot contour bridge and the open back locking tuners. Nice. And this one right here, what's this loaded with pickup wise? Lawler Imperial High Winds. There we go. Yeah, they're, nice. they're, they're, uh... yeah. yeah. I, I like these pickups an awful lot. They're, you know, when I have uh, talked to potential uh, pickup choosers or, or customers about um, these particular pickups because I've been so enamored with them that they're like, oh, no, no, I can't have a hot, you know, I don't want a hot pickup. I want a vintage voice. They're not like what you think of, you know, they're not like, you know, 15, 18K, yeah. you know, super ultra high output. They're just like a vintage hot and they've got a real nice throughout the sound spectrum, you know, like I, I just get that real nice, like you can hear the G and the B and the E yeah. string ringing through even, even on a pretty high gain, you know, and, and they're very, very articulate throughout, you know, like I've even run them through super, super gain and I'm like, you comparatively speaking with maybe some other uh, high output speaker, I think they have a lot more articulation, which for me, I like, you know, I, I would rather, you know, have a pickup that maybe doesn't hit the front of the amp quite as hard mm -hmm. and then be able to use a, a pedal or, or my amps drive to, to gain that, you know, get oh, that wow. gain up where I want it, you know, nice. because then I know that my, gu my guitar is super articulate, you know, it, it's a cleaner signal, if you will, going into the amp. Or the or the pedal board, and then you know I, I can I can uh, hit that gain with a with a more true or more articulate sound. So, in my mind anyway, it makes sense that you know that the gain structure that comes out, uh, the driven sound, if you will, and then you know what other other processing you add on top of it is going to be cleaner as well. And I don't mean cleaner like, you know, uh, not as uh, gritty or not as distorted, but I mean cleaner like I can hear the better, articulation. Better, better note separation. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. And like I say, even you know, just you do that, and that's you know, we're pretty high on the gain there. Just get that real nice, full sound, you know. Yeah. But you could still roll down the volume and get clean when they you want to. They clean up yeah. pretty good, you yeah. know. And, and, and some of that is is uh, definitely on the pickup, and then you know, using the Emerson pots, you know. It, it... Nice, yeah. And you still got. Right back to the yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, so it gives, uh, you know, here again, I like to think of, you know, certainly, you know, guys sitting in their bedroom, whatever, studio recording, having an uh, instrument that's useful, right? But where um, guitar becomes the most, uh, where it becomes like a tool of the trade is when you're playing live. It's got to be able to reform. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, I have to tap dance on a bunch of pedals to get the tone. If, if, I, can, if I can play something and my volume isn't significantly less, you know, I can clean up with my volume knob. Yeah. You know, I don't have to dance on the pedal board as much. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not you a good dancer. You don't playing. want to see that. No. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, how many? Uh, so you got the uh, the double cutaway S style here. You can do an evolution T. Yep. As well. And uh, what kind of configuration possibilities? Uh, or I should ask actually, where where do you stop at? with the options people can take for the evolution series. So the, uh, in in the evolution, they're a little bit more. Um, Modern take, like you know, we don't uh, use quite as uh, round of radius as is like maybe a <clears throat> uh, on our vintage series. Same, uh, you know, obviously the tele radius, but you know, um, being those two shapes are kind of there. Then we have um, what I've affectionately called the uh, Evo 2S. Um, so it's it's essentially a, a downsized, um, a little bit more aggressive, pointy, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, guitar like this. Uh, and I was going to bring one with me, but there, gosh, there was only so much room in the studio. So, uh, but we, yeah, we've got a lot of cool things and, and, uh, you know, that's, that's one of them. And that's kind of a, 
you know, a shredder's guitar, you know, flat radius, Floyd Rose, you know, it's a, you know, straight 16, yeah. um, you know, so it, it, it's, it's a, you know, jumbo frets and stuff. And then, um, you know, we've got, we've got some big plans for, for some new models that we're hoping to have done. Uh, actually just made my hotel reservations for NAM today, by the way. Oh, really? For yeah. winter NAM? Wow. Um, yeah, I was like, I got this email and I'm like, oh, shoot, if I don't get a hotel room now, I'm going to be, you know, walking all the way halfway, you know, I'll, <laughs> yeah. be, I'll be halfway home. I'll <laughs> Yeah, by that, by that point, might as well. I might yeah. as well just commute. But, uh, you know, so hopefully we'll have um, uh, the Infinity, uh, that's what the, new, the new line, which is, um, you know, we were going to probably move into that here pretty quick, but yeah. uh, I'll segue that myself. Sure. Uh, yeah, so we've got uh, uh, the Infinity line coming out as well, which um, for us is going to kind of be a, a brand-defining um, shape it's it's you know no, we're not straying too far con from convention uh you know uh, we're initially going to introduce it as a, as a double cut um a little bit more aggressive shape uh and we're gonna have that one available in a six and a seven string oh it's, uh, it's be, it'll be when you guys finally go to seven strings for the guys who want to go uh well, you know what they're, they're not going anywhere you know I, I look at sevens the same way as i look at five string bases you know when five string bases first came out years and years and years ago uh, guys are like, oh, you, you don't need a B string, you know, if I can't do it on a four string, you know, same thing when, you know, seven <laughs> yeah. and eight string. No, well, for me, yeah. I'm like, all right, I have trouble with six, so seven, yeah, maybe. I have trouble with four, so five, yeah, maybe. But anything, you know, beyond that is, um, but I have seen, you know, I mean, I know we've all seen, you know, these, these super, super talented guys are just killing yeah. it, right? And it but, you know, there's so much music now that, you know, requires of the live musician, you know, if, you, if you're going to pick up a gig and you're going to go tour with band, you know, X, Y, uh, you know, you have to have a five string bass or you have to have a seven string guitar because that's what the music was recorded with, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah. we want to be able to uh, that and, and, you know, for sure it opens up uh, a whole other demographic of musical genres for us, you know, where it's not just like, oh, those guys make, uh, you know, old guy guitars or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, it's good that you guys are offering uh, new options for contemporary players. Uh, it, uh, I'm getting, I got distracted. <laughs> um, but uh, I, at least they make uh, bills for the There we go. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm going to go strangle an intern very quick on the break. We'll be right back. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Dimiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release, and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. 
Hey, it's Tracy Smith and Beth Venus of Girls Talk Rock right here on the Inner Talk Radio Network. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Okay, Beth, they know that, but we want you to know that the Industry Pro's choice is Silver Tiger Production. STP is a full-service production agency offering sound, lighting, installations, talent buying, staffing, backline equipment, rental, and sales. Kapow! It's everything in the entertainment performance industry. It's all at... It's all that! SilverTigerProduction.com. Welcome to Sharpen the Axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berezetsky. Welcome back to the second half of Sharpen the Axe with our guest, uh, Kevin Proctor of Iconic Guitars here. And uh, we were talking about the, the next series that is planned to come out that you're going to have prepared by Winter Nam. <laughs> If everything goes well, yes. It, so it, yeah. it'll, be, it'll be the Infinity Series, uh, you know, and in, in, in that uh, naming convention, uh, you know, I, I kind of leave myself as a company open to do whatever the hell I want, you know, in the Infinity yeah. line, right? So we're going to start that off, like I said, with the six and the seven string, uh, you know, loosely based on the, on the S shape, um, but kind of our own take on it. And, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to here again, kind of, um, you know, certainly you know, one of the reasons I did this, I think, you know, I, I love the classic, you know, Strat and Tele shapes, you know, but, uh, you know, as a company, we want to kind of distinguish ourselves as having our own thing as well, you know, so we've got, uh, we've got those coming, like I said, hopefully, uh, if everything goes well, and it has, like I say, uh, the prototype came out really bitching, and, um, you know, we'd probably have it up and built here, and, uh, you know, kind of checking it, uh, kind of like how the the cobalt guitar uh, came together, you know, just build it yeah. and see see if it see if it flies, see if you can you know paddle water with it if you're ever up Shit's Creek or whatever, you know. <laughs> and uh, so um, you know, we'll make it a guitar and, and see how it goes, and it'll go on the wall, and you know uh, we've got a, we've got a bunch of those those firsts, if you will, and um, you know hopefully have the the production models ready to rock and roll for Nam. I know it's you know I, I just looked at it today, I'm like holy cow, man, this year is flying by. Yeah. So there's been a lot of really cool things, and like I said, we, you know, along the way, um, you know, we've we've met a lot of really great people, you guys included. Um, and, and I just had to say that, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you you check some mail. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, so we we uh, you know really excited about the new stuff. Um, you know, in in our our Evo line is is um, really doing well for us. It's been it's had a great reception, and we're hoping to you know you guys are, are digging it too. Um, it, it just is a, uh, is a, is a really good guitar for doing modern stuff, but it still does, uh, some of the vintage stuff as well, you know, to be able to get up and, you know, uh, get some classic kind of, uh, you know, two and four position sounds yeah. and then be able to get some of the aggressive, uh, you know, stuff as well. Uh, I think, I think it's going to serve us pretty well. Awesome. Right on. So there's a lot to look forward to and a lot available. Kind of like this Evo right here. Can okay, you tell us about the one that's in uh, in my hands right here? So this, these are actually the, the same guitar. You're you're looking at uh, you know the Evo S uh, Limited in in a 5A quilted maple, a flamed maple. Both of these are loaded with Lawler High Wind Imperials. Uh, both of them uh, have the uh, hip shot contour bridge, Emerson Electronics. Uh, and the one thing I didn't mention is we we, we went away purposely from you know the traditional five-way switch and we're using what's uh, known as a Schaller mega switch and um, gosh for every all intent and purpose and I know I'm going to say this and somebody says oh yeah I had one fail the other day but for all intents and purposes they're foolproof like they don't break and they're uh, circuit board based so they come in a different couple of different configurations so you can elicit some different sounds and we use the E and the M in a couple of different models but they're just they're really positive in in the way that they wire up is, is just fantastic so uh you know using the uh mitch's uh pots from emerson custom uh and then again you know the hip shot tuners and stuff but yeah these two are are, are some pretty pretty examples of you know an aztec and a copper in uh, the evolution s limited and you know we do these in a, in a number of different you know the tiger eye and uh 
We've got another faded denim, several different finishes that are, that are really cool and some that are just unique to us. There's, there's nobody else kind of doing them. I, I really wanted to here again utilize this to separate the brand from maybe some of the other guys that are you know, doing you know, traditional. You know, I'm not the only guy out there that's doing a, a strat shaped guitar and tele, telecaster shaped guitar. So we wanted to have some things that like, oh, when you see that, you, it starts to elicit you know, the iconic brand mm -hmm. with you. Um, and I think we're capturing that on, on some things, man. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's been a pretty good year, I, yeah. I can't lie. Right on. Have you uh, tried messing around with any original body designs? Yeah, so that's kind of when we, uh, that's been always the, the kind of the end goal. Mm -hmm. um, and with uh, the Infinity Series, it's, it's, it's our own shape. I mean, from start to finish, there's, you know, like I said, there's, um, there's a couple of ways you can go. You can stray as far as you want from convention and you can get something as uh, unique as like, you know, a Concord, you know, Jackson shape or, uh, you know, a BC, BC Ridge, Ridge or something like that, you know, and, and you can really just stand out there and be bold and go, hey, screw it. This is my damn guitar. But and uh, it, guitar players are like cats. They don't like change. Well, <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, people. it's a great comparison. Well, yeah, you know, so, um, you know, convention tells us that this is what a guitar looks like or, or a single cut Les Paul, that that's a, what a guitar, you know, because that's what all of our heroes have played, you know. So uh, here again, you know, it will, you know, there'll definitely be some, you know, it's a double cut. It's a, it's a Strat-ish mm -hmm. style guitar, but it's, it's, you know, like I say, from stem to stern, uh, you know, we're doing it with a 13 degree uh, tilt back headstock. You know, so some of the things that are, um, you know, really important to me as a player and, and some of the uh, really, really respectable players that I have made friends with in this uh, business, uh, you know, I'm like, hey, so if you could do something on a guitar, if you could take this guitar and make it, you know, the most cool, what would you do? So I've kind of been, uh, and it's like what, what I worked with Till on this guitar, um, you know, he's like, you know, dude, I love that my Sequins, one guitar. Sequins, rhinestones. That's yeah, yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're going to definitely do that for sure. Go full uh, Paul Stanley on it? That'd be amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but but being able to to take some of the things that uh, you know a modern player likes and, and utilizes, and like I say, you know, doing a, you know on, on those models, we'll be doing a 12 to 16 compound, so even a little bit flatter than the Evos, and then a straight 16. Wow. Um, you know, and and I just you know am really looking forward to seeing some of these guys that just play insane stuff. <laughs> Uh, once they get their hands on these guitars, so I'm really excited to to get them get them get them to Nam and uh, and because you know I can't play like that. I'm not gonna lie. And have any of your production models been inspired by like just the custom job that somebody requested? And that, this right this here. One? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I have to give uh, Till Paris a you know just you know we built the guitar, um, but the the inspiration for this guitar came from me. Gosh, we were just talking about this the other day. Him and I have probably had, I'm not even kidding, 40 plus hours of real conversation about this guitar. And I know when you're looking at it, you go, dude, it looks like a freaking Strat. What are you talking about? There's a lot of like little nuances and like, you know, you, you add a two point and you add, you know, a flatter radius and, you know, uh, heel adjust and you know, just all these little things that add up to make that guitar what it is and which is super badass, by the way. It is. Um, uh, you know, going with the roasted maple neck versus, you know, a, a traditional, you know, whether, you know, rock maple or mahogany or any other type of neck. And, you know, the, the two-piece center seam all their body and the, and the lacquer finish and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, those things where, you know, after, you know, God, I, we must, like I said, we just sat there for 40 hours, full-time job, one week, come up with a guitar, you know. But it, it actually took, a, you know, a lot more conversation. So, you know, in, in talking with him, I'm like, you know, started telling people, and I think you and I even talked about it once several months ago. I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm working on this kind of cool thing. It's going to kind of be a cross between blah, 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 blah. And people go, dude, that's a great idea. Yeah. I'd be, in, I'd be into something like that, you know. Yeah. So, so for me, uh, you know, and I talk with Tillman, I'm like, hey, let's do this, man. Let, let's, let's make this model. Let's, let's put it out. And we'll kind of, like I say, we're going to kind of slot it somewhere between uh, our vintage inspired series, which are kind of, you know, period pieces, if you will, with some of the, the things that we talked about last time, you know, we still do compound radius and stuff on those. And then, you know, these evolution guitars, which are, you know, uh, um, you know, more of a, a, a 2020 ish guitar, you know, mm -hmm. 
So it, it kind of slots itself in there really well. And uh, man, it's, it's, it, it makes it for a very, very versatile instrument. Like We're, we're really hoping that it that. will, you know, I have attempted, gosh, forever to find a guitar that you could go out there and play everything with. Yeah. I've never found it. I'm not saying this is it, but it's pretty damn close. It's close. And that's, that's an important thing that a lot of players are looking for is that the studio workhorse, that utility guitar. I mean, with the, uh, with the Emerson custom uh, guts and the, the switching system on these, I mean, you can, you can coax out whatever tone you want. You really can. And, and one of the things that's, that's important in being able to do that, and, and you know, for us, is like, all right, well, let's, let's put it together. Let's see what it does. Go and play it. And like I was telling you earlier, you know, I don't want to split a humbucker just to say that I can. Mm -hmm. I want it to split and be usable. Yes. Right. And if I can't do that live, and and you know, and in the, in the instance that I do do it, and it becomes, I said, do do again. <laughs> you did. And that's that's <laughs> twice, third, twice in less than third time to get now, a prize. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can work that in again here in a minute. Um, <laughs> but it's got to be organic, man. I can't yeah, just yeah, do it yeah, now. Yeah, that's it's, true. It'll it'll force it will. Yeah, it'll see we'll contrived. Know. That's yeah. BS, man. It's got to just come natural like that through conversation. <laughs> Uh, I think I've gone like, I don't know how many years without saying that, but I've said it twice <laughs> in an hour. This show just brings it out. <laughs> exactly. It brings out yeah, all, the, it really does. all the verbal diarrhea. Um, but no, for real, um, I mean, you know, being able to, you know, do it well, right? Not just, eh, but, you know, yeah, man, that, that's, that's pretty killer. Yeah. yeah. That, that's important, you know? And, uh. Oh goddamn! Where was I gonna go? You're still, you're still, uh, you're still working on the vintage, the vintage series. You have not slowed down on that. You have not cut. It's actually models, picked right? up, right? Oh, really? So, um, I, I think I even said in uh, at one point, I said, "Boy, I'd really like to stop doing relics." And it's almost as soon as those words came out of my mouth, mm -hmm. it's just been a flood. <laughs> you know, which I'm not complaining, but you know, for the way that we do relics. <laughs> Um, in, in one of the comments that we go, you know, we get pretty regularly in, you know, review, if you will, is that, you know, it looks as if it's subtle. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, even on this one, it's intended to be super subtle, but even on this one, which is a, a little bit heavier, you know, it, it's, it's meant to look like a guitar that's actually been played and, and worn, yeah. not something that you just left outside for a couple of years and then decided to drag it behind your car over to Walmart, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and not that there's anything against Walmart, but I'm just using that as a you know, illustration because it's just down the street. And, and it's uh, and I like it on this one, you know, it's there's markings that where the forearm would have hung. There's on the back, there's buckle rash. Uh, it, there's some relic jobs that come out, and it really just looks like they just threw shit at it and then <laughs> glossed it over. There's yeah, some that look terrible. Well, yeah. you know what? Uh, <laughs> on, uh, one of the one of the trademarks that I do, and I don't think I did it on this one, but I do it on a lot of guitars, is on two of my own guitars, though, from my days of playing out, I have, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, the serration, if you will, on the bottom of a beer bottle. Mm -hmm. Two of my guitars have those indents on them. Really? Yeah, from you know, nice. two o'clock bar <laughs> shows, whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, every now and then I'll grab a beer bottle out of the shop fridge and be like, <laughs> and <know>. done. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, it, it, it's uh, you know everything that we're trying to do. You know, on the relic stuff, and you know, and the vintage inspired is, is definitely to pay uh, homage to the, you know those guitars. I mean, it's it's you know, it is what it is, right? Now it's it, interesting to uh, to see what all the relic stuff is going to look like thirty years from now. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, like like looking like SRVs number one, just just no paint left right, on yeah, just practically. Time for a refinish, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then we'll paint them again. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, do you do do you guys uh, do some refinishes if needed? Yeah, if um, you know, thankfully, you know. Knock yeah. on wood, we haven't had to refinish any of our own, but uh, um, we're moving into a new facility. Um, wow. We had a, a, a place that uh, I had picked out, and uh, just because this is the way I have to do things and make it so difficult, uh, we're looking, my wife and I are looking to actually relocate and move oh, wow. in our personal residence. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to kind of just hold off on the shop because I want to make sure... I don't want to have a you know an hour long commute to the shop. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I'm like, then it ended up we had looked at all these other places, and then we ended up right back there. And by the time I went to make the commitment on a lease for the shop space, I'm like, oh, sorry, dude, it's gone. So we're, we've kind of gone back into the hunt for that. But um, you know, uh, so once we get in there, uh, we may start offering that a, a little bit more readily. Um, you know, kind of keep the paint booth moving along more. Right on. 
And uh, aside from uh, all the all the wonderful stuff that's happening with the guitars, you've also added in uh, basses, right? When did that start? Uh, you know what? Uh, we actually did the first one we put up on the wall at uh, at Winter Nam, and I had a, a dear friend of mine um, said, "Dude, you told me you were going to do basses," and I'm like, "I know, I know." It's, it's, it's been a long time in the works, and uh, I've been wanting to do them, and, and I love playing bass. I like playing bass an awful lot, and it's just been a matter of time and getting the designs done, getting them hammered out and prototyped and all that other stuff. Um, so we did uh, a four and a five string uh, P bass simultaneously, and, and I've kept this one for myself. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, and, and, the, and the four string um, we, we've been doing, um, and we're doing these, and the, these are in the vintage series. So again, you know, they're kind of inspired by you know the the old P bases of yesteryear, and uh, but you know here again, obviously this one is you know a five string, and there and there wasn't P bases of five string, you know, of yesteryear with nitro on them. So. Anything you can do on a five string, you should be able to do on a four. There's no need for it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Florentino's gonna bust through the door and have some things to say about that right quick. <laughs> You're gonna get yourself kicked in the shin in a minute. <laughs> nah, he's a four string player. I don't think he does five. So, oh, but. Never. Uh, oh. But, uh, you know, in, in, the, in keeping with, uh, you know, the shape and, and everything that we were going uh, in, in kind of slotting that into, you know, we updated the bridge a little bit, put a shallower bridge. So, yeah, how about you tell us about the features that are on the one in front of us here? Uh, so, kind of in the same vein as we do the, the vintage-inspired stuff, um, you know, Olympic white nitro, uh, nitro-finished neck. Um, then on this one, we're running a Nordstrand pickup in it. And then I was going to run uh, kind of a vintage-inspired five-string uh, bridge, and it just it just didn't fit, man. Didn't work. No, yeah. no, I didn't like didn't like it. So then um, I, I've run this shallower before on other guitars, and, and I really like the adjustability of it and uh, the stability of it. So I put it on there, and I was like, yeah, it just fits. It, it looks good. It feels good. Plays well. Um, so we went ahead and, and ran that, and I, you know, the shallower stuff you just can't beat anyway. As far you know. Uh, setting the intonation, everything on it, uh, string height is, is just pretty, pretty good. Nice. It's, I mean, it's comfortable to play. very comfortable to play and it's uh uh is this a vintage radius on this or is it something a little bit more on the modern it's side a, it's more modern yeah you know so i was like all right well you know what it's not really any vintage <laughs> p basis in the five string yeah, you know, true. And, and, yeah uh, also true you know the, the flatter just works better uh on a five string anyway <laughs> subwoofers yeah right <laughs> <laughs> rattling someone's room right now no I've, been, I've liked uh we've used um some david allen's we've used some nordstrand and we've used uh some lawlers and uh i like them all i, I um i've got some uh lawlers going in a, in a j base uh so we're doing it uh we've got right now uh we've got a j4 a j5 and a, and a p4 and a p5 nice and um I got, you know, pretty much I would spec that anyway. The, the jazz bass I did in a, in a poly finish, and um, like I said, I did this one, and you know, it, it uh, you know, can kind of um, be whatever you want it to be. Nice. So there is some configure, configurability Absolutely. for players out there. And do you have any uh, that are out on the road right now, any of the basses? Or? Um, I don't think anybody of note is playing here. You know, we, we get, uh, we get, um, a very small amount of bases just because I haven't been pushing them. You know, when we went to NAM, um, we did them at the behest of a good friend of mine. You know, it's like, I gotcha, gotta, yeah. you know, gotta yeah. do it. Um, so, you know, it's probably something that uh, we will start, uh, you know, pushing in the market a little bit more. Um, you know, we've really been focused on, you know, we put a lot of uh, eggs in the basket of the, uh, you know, the evolution basket, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and it's paid off, you know, they've had great response, you know, 
uh, kind of did, I don't know if you want to call it a soft launch, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of put a couple of bases out there and said, hey, man, you know, what do you think? And, uh, and it's been a great response. It's just, you know, it, it, we're not selling, obviously, as many. You know, we're not known for that as, as much as we are for the guitars. Can yeah, you take a look at that? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I'm getting jealous over here. <laughs> So we were talking about, uh, and then aside from the, the shallower bridge and the North Strand pickup, we're, again, we're running uh, Emerson Potts in this with, uh, um, one of the things that I found that I liked in, in all the, the vintage pieces, in this one as well, and I'm probably on some kind of national watch list or something now, especially with all the stuff that's going on with Russia, but I order these new old stock, mil spec Russian, uh, paper and oil capacitors. Really? Yeah, and they come like there's no English words except my name and address uh, <laughs> on the package. Wow. Right, everything else is in Russian, and you know it's got this uh, stuff on there. Uh, so I've been ordering those now for I've been using those for a little over a year, and uh, I, I had just kind of found them on accident. And I said, Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a yeah. handful of those, and then I put them in, and I was like. Yeah. Yeah. So then wow. uh, I went back and you know ordered a bunch more, and like I said, I you know now I you know have correspondence emails with Russia, and, like, <laughs> Russia, Russia, Russia. You know, so um, yeah. So I was sure like, oh yeah, you know. There's, but if I ever get investigated, that'll be it. Hey, I was just got to say, it was just some caps for basses. That's it, right? right? Well, we use them in the guitars too. Oh, you so, did? Yeah. This this got the you know the uh, oh, wow. mil spec Russian uh, paper and oil capacitor in it as well. Nice. So, uh, I, I mean, it shows that you take the, the time to source parts for, for your instruments that are high quality yeah, and have, have great... I have a lot of them. Because you, know, <laughs> you just don't normally buy them five at a time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, um, I, I'm banking on that we're going to continue to keep doing these, so uh, I, I got to... They have to dismantle a whole rocket to get <laughs> it. <laughs> are there some Soyuz that are just torn apart laying in a field somewhere out there? Yeah, yeah. So, no... Um, but they, they've just, uh, you know, they've performed well. We've, we've done, um, you know, some tone testing with, uh, you know, some vintage um, Marshall stuff, some vintage Fender amps and stuff like that. And I've just been really, really impressed, especially when we match them up to the, the pickups that we were already using. Um, it, they've just, uh, it's just that little, eh, that just a little bit more that, that made it that much better. You know, it's, yeah. like, it's like these go to 11, you know? <laughs> it's just that little bit more. And uh, for those that would be interested in a iconic base, uh, do you have a starting point, uh, a price starting point for builds? Yeah, I think. Uh, gosh, just off the top of my head, Eric, I think those are. Uh, I think they're twenty three, twenty four, right in that area. Starting from yeah, they, both. Yeah. Nice. Right on. So it's uh, rubles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's definitely a great playing base. It like like everything else you play, build man plays like butter. Thank you. Yeah, that, uh, this one's, uh, you know, in, in here again, straying a little bit from the, the vintage where, you know, we got hip shot tuners on there too. Uh, you know why? Because they're really freaking good, you know, and, and they work well and I love the ratio on them and they, they hold the tune really well. Um, and we've even done these um, uh, in Relic as well. I think there's a picture uh, of a, uh, a four string P bass on our website that's, you know, got a really tasty Relic on it and, nice. you know, kind of kind of beat those up a little bit and, and made them look like they've been around the block three, he, three or four hundred times. And you got a build coming up that's uh, that's all murdered out, right? Or will yeah, be? Yeah, so I've got a jazz bass that I'm running. Uh, it's a maple neck, but I'm running ebony fingerboard on it. Um, everything on it's black. Um, and, and it, again, maybe a one that, that hangs on the wall in the studio. Nice. Uh, and that's kind of one of the prerequisites, one of the things that kind of kind of jacked me about the uh, shop space that we had. It had a really nice kind of demo area where, you know, folks could come in and you know, we could have some, you know, bitching guitars hanging on the wall and stuff. Right on, yeah. Uh, which is kind of a requisite. So, you know, when, once, we're, uh, once we're up and running, you know, maybe we'll have you guys down and you can, can run, run through yeah. the full gamut of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We'll do an episode from there. Right on. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying to, to I keep trying to like well, what's he playing what's he playing oh crap I'm on air I can't I can't sit here Cedric, yes. Cedric back there behind the camera is making faces at me when he heard Super Freak he's like seriously bro yeah. <laughs> and I, I thought for a second I thought Groove is in the heart yeah, well, oh, oh I, I got it right awesome <laughs> <laughs> I 
expose you to it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is, is there anything else that, uh, uh, oh, wait, actually, quick question, since you mentioned the ebony fretboards, I mean, we, uh, most of these here have a uh, rosewood, we have the roasted maple over there. Can you order a, a, cl a cla or classic series or a uh, evolution with an ebony fretboard if We've you want? We've been monkeying around with that a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys uh, have talked about the, the CITES regulations at that's, all. That's what I was going to go into, if that's been um, a problem for you as a builder. It, it's, it's not really a problem. You know, it, I think it maybe got made out to be more of a problem than it actually may turn out to be for most people. Um, for those of you that you know don't know, um, just to kind of give you a high-level flyby without getting into too much, uh, there's a there's a worldwide organization that is called CITES, and they have placed um, rosewood in all of its forms on the endangered list. It used to just be Brazilian rosewood, mm -hmm. and you know over forestation and all the other things. And you now certainly we're all um, you know concerned about uh, you know the environment and being great custodians and everything, um, but uh, you know the rosewood that's being been being used for, uh, you know, the Indian rosewood has been sustainably being farmed and, you know, responsibly, blah, 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 blah. So that's what we're using. We're using the Indian rosewood on all of our guitars. But now that, and I don't recall the uh, Latin name for it off the top of my head, um, is also placed on that endangered list and, and has some regulations as far as transporting over borders. If you're going to buy a guitar and you're going to be traveling around the United States, it's not a problem. Okay. If you're going to take it out of the country, then it becomes an issue and you've got to have some, some documentation to go with your guitar. And um, it, it's, it's an awful lot um, on our side to, to get that. And, and we're working on some things in the background where we can basically include that, almost like a certificate of uh, authenticity. Yeah. And I don't know, you might, may even start seeing some of that coming in down at Pitbull here pretty quick, where yeah. you know, it's basically a, a, a passport, if you will, for your guitar <laughs> to go pass. you know, internationally. Um, so we're not going to stop at this moment. I know there's some, some large companies who have made the, the transition away from it. We're not going to stop. I'm hoping that some calmer heads will prevail and maybe there can be some conversation about, you know, being a good planet custodian yeah. and, and doing things responsibly rather than just saying, oh, no, you know, we're not going to. So I know some so, companies, you know, well, we may at some point uh, offer the Powell Faro, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a viable option. Um, but the ebony on a jazz bass is just kind of a thing, you know, I mean, yeah. so when, when we're doing that, uh, that just... Um, but right at right now, <clears throat> um, for us, I'm going to continue with the with the maple, uh, maple maple and the two piece necks, maple Indian rosewood. Right on. Um, and you know, on certain models like a jazz bass, where you would you would see a, an ebony fingerboard, we'll, nice. we'll do that as well. So it's good to know those options are, are going to be available and continue to use rosewood. Uh, we're just about out of time here. Right on cue. Thank you very much for joining us, Kevin. Thank you, guys. Going Amazing off work as always. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you very much for having us, guys. It's been a pleasure. And until next time, I'm Eric Cicero. And I'm Paul Berzeski. Sharp in the action there on Talk Radio. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for watching.